Kirk Herbstreet, ESPN college football analyst, of course, on the 6 p.m. Sports Center, talking about, I would say, the most watched prospect. I don't, can you remember a prospect that's been watched since the seventh grade, like this guy, Harry? Since the seventh no, grade? No, not since seventh grade. This might be the most watched prospect ever. That Here is weight. Kirk Herbstreet. Is, he's, this prospect signed with Texas now. Are the Longhorns back? I'm not one of these to say anybody's back. Texas is not back right now. Um, I think their real fans would tell you that. But this is definitely a step in the right direction and a recruit, recruiting coup, not only to get the quarterback, but eventually watch the other dominoes fall behind him because of getting such a big-time recruit. And a quarterback who's a distributor in that offense that Mac Jones and Tua and others have played in over the years. All right. We are talking, of course, straight talk wireless, no contract, no compromise, of about Arch Manning. And, of course, you know what I resent about this, Harry? It's too perfect. Wait, so he's not Peyton or Eli's kid. <laughs> he's the one who didn't play. He's Cooper's kid, of course, who right? Got, who got and hurt. He, and he's going to be the best out of all of them because <laughs> Cooper, hey, Cooper wasn't in a position. So he's good. It's too – how good is Arch Manning? He's good, man. He's good. When you talk about the number one prospect in 2023, a guy who has drawn attention from a LSU, a Alabama, a Texas, a Clemson, that says a lot. And all those fan bases, I'm looking at uh, Twitter yesterday, and all those fan bases are in disarray because he committed to Texas. But I'll tell you what this actually did do. For a guy like Steve Sarkeesian, he struggled in year one at Texas, right? He used two quarterbacks in Hudson Carter and Casey Thompson. It didn't work out. Um, that whole ordeal, there was chatter about in year one, is Steve Sarkeesian the guy? Should we start looking for someone else? Which is bizarre and crazy in my eyes because it is year one. But when you look at a guy like Steve Sarkeesian in the offense, that is a pro-style offense. Got to remember, he was the OC in Atlanta for a year. He was the OC or the quarterback back coach, to I SC think. with Pete Carroll, like yes. oh, that whole thing, man. They love him. In they, 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 there's a lot of love for Sark in a lot of different spots. And, and that's why when you look at that offense, you look at guys and receivers that play in it, it translates to the NFL. Mm. Now you have Arch Manning coming. Now recruiting-wise, as a coaching staff, as a recruiting coordinator, you can, I won't say take your feet off the gas a little bit, but Arch Manning is going to do the recruiting for you by committing to Texas. I wonder what the NIL Now you're going to see the dominoes. Fi- oh, the NIL. How much? But let me tell you why it has to be crazy. Manning? Let me tell you why it has to be crazy. But John Robinson, their star running back, right? Yeah. He has a deal, I believe it's with Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. If he has a deal with Lamborghini, think about the NIL money that Arch Manning is getting and the products that he's getting. What's the higher than Lamborghini? What is it, Bugatti? (laughs) Sign over for Marquis Jet. He's going to have his own 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 private private jet in college. That's right. But here's the thing, and it's crazy because you say, well, a lot of it is like what Key would say, it's branding, right? It's all the yeast that the media puts on it. Here, I'll be key. I'm sitting in a spot right now. <laughs> it's all the yeast that I could do. Like, I already know the algorithms of his brain. He has an allergic reaction but to Max. this kind of stuff. But yeah, Max. right. But is he really different, though? <laughs> see, I, I, I think different. When I look at it, I see the same thing. Same thing. All these top guys. We have to wait and see little by little. So I get it. Like, like from but that, I, but from I'll that you, point I'll of view. I'll tell you the difference, though. Huh? When you look at a guy like Arch Manning, who's... Uh, uncles are Eli and Peyton. Yep. He's coming up. He's going through things differently. And grandfather is is Archie Manning. He's <laughs> going through things differently than those guys have done. Think about how the game has transcended since those two have even played. So they're teaching him one-on-one things from two different quarterback perspectives. And you add the grandfather, three quarterback perspectives. It's crazy. And, th- and by the way, this is another thing that's too pat about this whole story. I'm not even sure Arch Manning exists I need to be – let me tell you something. Wait, you mean to tell me Cooper's kid, who's basically named after or after the grandfather, he winds up – but you, here's the thing about – the reason I brought up the key stuff how and the branding and how he kind of has an allergic reaction to that because he just wants to evaluate the player mm-hmm. and not let all the extra media stuff that he calls yeast on it, like not let it affect him. But I remember the Eli Manning draft, Philip Rivers – Coming out, you can see he's better than Eli, right? Yep. But the Giants traded up. They gave up the the picks that wound up being Nate Kading and Sean Merriman, who were both excellent at what they did, just about as good as it got, in order to get Eli number one overall. And if you look at their careers, Phillip Rivers put up better numbers, you know, more accurate, the whole thing. More touchdowns, fewer interceptions, better one loss record. I wouldn't make I wouldn't undo that deal. I want Eli Manning. 
He brought two Super Bowls two. to the Giants. Well, did against he really, the goat, right? Against, against the, goat. the goat. Well, did he really? It was this. It was that. It was a defense. He rolled the defense. Eli Manning made the plays when they needed to. Let me tell you something. They, Nate Silver at five thirty eight did a thing where he's trying to find out who is the most clutch postseason quarterback who ever lived. Right. In other words, how much did his level in the playoffs rise from his level in the regular season? So he does this whole formula, and he comes out with Eli Manning. And th- but there were too many other guys who you really wouldn't think of like that on the list. He's like, I got to change my methodology, right? Like, mm-hmm. I got it because Eli was also twice as clutch as anyone else. When he redid the list, Joe Montana was second. And, and it was more like the list you'd expect. Eli was still first. He was the most clutch quarterback in the history of the playoffs compared to his baseline of the regular season. He played, think about what, who he beat on the road in those two Super Bowls. On the road the whole time, killing the greatest quarterback, beating Aaron Rodgers, Going Brett to Favre, Lambeau. at Lambeau, both of them. So would I undo that? No. And That's Harry, we all know, the only reason they took Eli was because his last name was Manning. If Phillip Rivers was Phillip Manning, they'd have stayed with <laughs> Phillip Rivers, right? But, but, that pedigree and that last name, it turned out to mean something. It actually meant something. Is that because of what you said? Because it's such a football family, because of Archie and Peyton, that, that these guys just know things that other quarterbacks don't? They do, and I'm glad you brought that up. Because for no reason, don't think that Eli, Arch, and Peyton won't have their hands in a lot of things that Texas do when Arch Manning is there. Ooh. So, <laughs> so we talked about the start of the conversation, that Arch Manning has been like – talked about and, and basically recruited since seventh grade. Yeah. And so Pat and I were talking, like Pat said, this is like this is like Zion, like that level of hype. Yeah. I think it's LeBron. Mm-hmm. Is is Arch Manning is is Arch Manning LeBron or or Zion, like in terms of the hype in high school? Zion. I would go if you're if you're I would go oh man, that's that's a tough one. I mean, like, we act like, listen. Like, I think it's going to be LeBron. Like, like I think Arch Manning is going to be on Sports Illustrated before, like, next week. But you know what like the difference before is, Before he's Evan, even in, I hear in what college. It's the family what, name. I hear what you're saying about, about um, LeBron, right? And I would agree with that. But LeBron was billed before he ever, before anyone saw him play in high school. He was being billed as Magic Johnson meets Michael Jordan, Right. This guy has a chance to be the greatest player ever. I have not heard that about Arch Manning. Yeah. In terms of the level of scrutiny from an early age, maybe. But it, I don't think it comes attached. I don't think Arch Manning is supposed to be the greatest quarterback of all time. And he's not the physical oh, yes, specimen is. that LeBron was yeah, maybe he is. coming yeah. up. Yeah, right, right. But, yeah, maybe he's supposed to be in that conversation <laughs> by the time all is said and done. Is, he definitely better be the best Manning oh, quarterback. Oh, my ex better be the best Manning. live in Texas. That. Eli Manning, two-time Super Bowl MVP. Archie Manning, one of the best quarterbacks. Peyton Manning, when he and Tom Brady were both in their primes, the reality is, I mean, I would have taken Tom Brady. A lot of people would have. But it was kind of like he gave us a feeling that he was a winner and he had Belichick. Just eyeballs on them. Peyton Manning was considered the best player in football. Arch is supposed well, he's better be better than all those guys. You got Ooh. some pressure on him now. Straight talk wireless, no contract, no compromise. We're getting closer and closer, are we? To Kyrie leaving KD? Yeah. Like Keegan Moore. Uh, they needed this. a guy like Keegan Matt Matt Murray. Don't though. overthink this. They did it because they're the Kings. <laughs> they have no idea what they're doing. GM Terrible. Of the Portland Trail Blazers calls Bobby Knight. Mm-hmm. Says Bobby, um, who should I draft in this upcoming draft? Bobby Knight said Michael Jordan. They said, yeah, but we already got Clyde Drexler. We need a center. Bobby Knight said, draft Jordan, play him at center. <laughs> Just take the best player. Get them when you got a superstar. T- him and Kate Cunningham in Detroit. What do your home and auto have in common? They're both yours, and Progressive protects them both. Bundle today at Progressive.com. So, like, look, we talk about the upside of Paulo Boncaro. Then there's the upside of a football prospect we've been talking about since he was in the seventh grade. That's, ooh, and the name of royalty in the NFL. It That's next. Harry Douglas in for Key and Jay doing the job of two men. Keyshawn J. Willemax. 